also to Pastor Lucia, who offered ashes to those who came between 11 and 1 in our chapel. Congratulations, Kenneth Brown. Woo! Kenneth Brown was recently honored by the city of Orlando, Florida for his fashion show presentation for Black History Month. The show is entitled, A Journey Through the Great Migration. Kenneth is the founder and artistic director for Cultural Fusion Inc., a nonprofit theater company which produces works that share the African American and Latino experience. He has been a fashion and costume designer for half a decade. Congratulations, Kenneth. The Examine, our Lenten Bible study. Join us in person each Wednesday of Lent, beginning next Wednesday, March 13th, well, this coming Wednesday, March 13th, at 7.30, in person or online. For those joining us in person, there will be refreshments. For those who want to join us online, simply go to our Facebook page of Founders Metropolitan Community Church and sign in to the live feed. You will be able to type in your comments or questions, and there will be a monitor to respond. Pastor Lucia Chappelle and Garrett Clint are our facilitators, and Reverend Keith is our online monitor. We look forward to lively discussions. And lastly, nothing without us today. Join us immediately after the, the 11 a.m. service downstairs in the theater for a viewing of the documentary, Nothing Without Us, The Women Who Will End AIDS. This documentary features our guest speaker today, Dr. Joyce Turner Keller, and it lasts approximately one hour. Thank you, enjoy the service. Amen.
to hearing what you have to say. And it can come in any way. It can come in a still small voice. It can come through the messenger. It can come through communion. It can come through our prayer time. It can come even through the offertory. God, you have a way of speaking to us any way that we can hear you. And so now, God, we turn ourselves over. We put our ears up to hear everything that you have for us. And we receive every word you have for us today. A word of encouragement. A word that gives us hope and life and joy and love. And now, God, we pray that we will all leave here after this service better and change for the better than we were when we came here. We ask in the name of Jesus our Christ and all that is holy. Amen. 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 We want to welcome you. And if you are here for the first time with us today, would you wave at me? Let me just wave at you. Oh boy, I see him waving. We have some Those people that are sitting around, those folks who are waving, um, please make sure you take note of it so when we pass the piece in a few minutes, you can make them feel especially welcome and let them know just how festive and hospitable we are. Amen. We also want to say um, welcome to those folks. We wave out all to all of you joining us online. We love that you check in with us every week. I go through and I see all these lists of people from all over the world that have checked in, that are worshiping with us live from all over the world. Sometimes they're in all sorts of strange time zones. I think some of these people are up at 3 o'clock in the morning watching us live. And then other times it comes in later during the week that they check us out at a different time because it's, it, it's taped and so they can see it. And we, we just want to say a special thank you for joining us. And also, uh, if, if you are not new with us, if you are one of our faithful folks, we just want to say that we're always delighted to see you here. It just thrills me every week when I come in and, and I see our faithful people just being more and more and more faithful. Just, and I know that some of you drive a long distance. And I know that some, for some people it's a major sacrifice to come, to be here in person. And I just want to say thank you. And I think sometimes we forget to say thank you to people that drive. I know what it's like. I drove an hour and ten minutes one way for six years to church uh, when I first found MCC. But I found MCC. And I had to be there. You know? I had to be there. I had to be there. Because the Spirit was there. And I was finding freedom. And I was finding things I had never I, I guess I need to stop because I need to go back to the I'm going to have to do some basic with you. So I'll leave that right there and invite you to take just a moment, a couple of minutes, and, and, and share uh, peace with one another. Just let the people around you know you're glad to be there. Can these 
bones live. I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then God said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of humanity, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breathe from the four winds, breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as God commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Hear what the Spirit says to me. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Uh, Reverend Dr. Joyce Keller Turner, a Turner Keller, <laughs> sorry. Joyce, she's Dr. Joyce today, so I always forget the last two names. Dr. Joyce Turner Keller, who is visiting with us from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. She you know, right. was there for the last 11 and a half years before coming to you last June. And uh, Dr. Joyce became a dear friend of mine there. We went through some uh, things together. Um, we both lost our houses in 2016 to the floods. And um, we, that journey took uh, almost a year or so to, to put us back together, to put our homes back together. And most of us had to start from the studs and, and work our way back up. Uh, and it, it was just an emotional time. It was a very difficult time. But we got through it. And she'll tell you about some other victories that she's had. But you know, in Metropolitan Community Church, we, we are a predominantly LGBTQ church. And here we have Dr. Joyce and other allies with us who come from a different world and have a different perspective. And yet, come to us, not trying to make us different, but loving us for who we are. And being a part of who we are. And saying, and, I, and, I, and I, I don't want to take any of her words away from her, but she didn't say this in the first sermon, so I don't know if it will come up in this one. But um, she was telling me this week, she said, it, it wasn't until I came. She said, I've been to lots of churches and lots of denominations. She's a, a gifted speaker. She lectures. She's a professor, uh, a teacher. In fact, one of the first times I, I talked with her, she had invited me to her house, and there was a group of students there that she was teaching about HIV and how to go out and be teachers and, and help people do not become HIV infected. And so she was healing the healers and, and, and sending them out. And um, she said that it wasn't until I came to MCC that I began to understand and began to see this acceptance and celebration of everybody. She said, y'all just love everybody. Amen. <laughs> and I said, yes, we, we just love everybody. So if you're not feeling loved, you came to the right place today. Because <laughs> we just don't love you, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so hang in there with us. You'll get to love us even more. We'll help you love us back. Dr. Joyce uh, has, she's also an actress. She has, uh, she is on a documentary, the one that we're showing downstairs after worship. I know some of you were in their last hour, so you got to see her on the documentary about healing people with AIDS. They're finding a cure. They're the women who are behind making that happen. It's very powerful. She's a very powerful and anointed and gifted speaker, and we have her come lots of times over to MCC and Baton Rouge to minister with us. She did a lot of, pro of, of programs where she would come in on special days like today, which is National Women and Girls AIDS and HIV Awareness Day. And she would come in on special days and do a drama um, and have people in our congregation participate and bring in other people. She brought in people from the community that had never heard of NCC, that didn't know what it was like to know what gay Christians were. And there they were worshiping with us. Wow. And finding out and, and going back and telling her later, I, I didn't know that could be like that. <laughs> and there's an anointing in this place. Amen. There's a Holy Spirit in this place. Yes. And God, I said, well, you just got to let people know. That's right. You come to the right place because we just worship the Lord like everybody else does. Yes. Anyway, would you give a welcome, warm welcome, hospitable welcome to Dr. George? Good morning. Good morning. Giving God all the praise and all of the glory this morning. Amen. He is the author and finisher of my faith. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to use them. <laughs> I tried that this morning. It didn't work. <laughs> but you know, Sometimes the best laid plans go awry. Right. <clears throat> I 
There go my mom again. <laughs> I just might. Well, I shared it with the last one, I'll do it again. This was my mother's card. It's a scripture study card. It says, but without, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. My ear's not cooperating. Okay, there we go. My mother transitioned a month, well, a year and a few months ago. So it seems that every time I get up to preach, that thing falls out of the Bible. So I guess they're, I'm one of these days I'm going to have to write a sermon. Well, I'm going to have to have a sermon because I can't. I'm, I'm learning now to write sermons. I'm not very good at writing. I just let the Spirit of the Holy Ghost flow. But this morning, God gave me Titus 2. And I can't tell you that I'll say the same thing now I said this morning because I don't even know what I said half the time. <laughs> but as it comes, I'll, I'll give it to you. Titus chapter 2, it says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. And as Pastor Keith alluded, alluded to, sound doctrine is not always that which we have been taught. Mm-hmm. I came from a Baptist background. I love the people in the church. However, I did not always obey that teaching. Mm-hmm. Hence, that's why I'm here. (laughs) It is difficult to be a heterosexual black female minister anywhere, especially in the black Baptist church. When you are not ruled and guided by tradition and religion, you're not readily accepted. I don't follow any traditional rules of anything. This is why I never became military. But the scripture tells us that the aged men be sober, grave, Temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Now we have to be honest. And I'm going to Washington, D.C. now because we know that our people in, our elected officials in Washington, D.C., they're not sober. They're not sound in faith. They're not gracious in charity. And it seems they have lost patience with who we are. Now I'm supposed to be speaking about dry bones and here I am talking about everything else. But you know, I have to bring the message as it is given to me. But it said, aged women like myself. (laughs) You know what I mean, I'm just saying. Likewise, is that? I'm good. Likewise, they be in behaviors as becometh holiness. Now, I've tried that and I fall short, y'all. Not false accusers. A lot of us are that way. Me and guilty. Not given much to wine, thank God, I don't need it. And it said, teachers of good things. It said that they may teach the young women to be sober 
Yeah, then chill out. I'm getting to the next part. To love their husbands. Now, everybody ain't going to have one of those, so, okay. <laughs> to love their children. Everybody ain't going to have none of them. But we're to be discreet, mm. chaste, mm. keepers at home, mm. good, <laughs> obedient to their <coughs> own husband. <laughs> that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now, I know some of y'all got a little rattle there. <laughs> some of y'all figure I ain't going to have no husband. I understand. I don't have one either. He dead. Uh, no, seriously, he is dead. He died Thursday. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not making a joke of it, but he's actually dead. But even before he died, I didn't have it. So I was not obedient there, y'all. Because a part of me knew that I was in the wrong place with the wrong person for all the wrong reasons. Now, my text today is, I am a dry bone. And some of you in here can relate to that. And you can relate to that because you know yourself that you did the best you could to walk that line that society say you should walk, to be what society chose to define you as, and yet you couldn't stay in that path. All I can say to you today, the only thing that can keep you on the straight and narrow path is the God that you serve. Man cannot put you in a heaven or a hell. Amen. Hence, I am a dry bone. I am a dry bone this morning because of the, the roads that I have traveled, the missteps that I have made, those things that I have been blinded by and not always seen from a spiritual side. That makes me, and a lot of you, all of us, a dry bone. But you see, I have to go there this morning because I'm sure that the conversation has been had, can gay people, LGBT or whatever, be saved? So I ask the question, can I as a divorced woman, I as an adulterer, uh-oh, I put it out there. <laughs> can I be saved? I haven't been a dry bone, am still a dry bone, can I be saved? I mean, is God's grace as sufficient for me as a heterosexual woman who believes in God as it is for you? Is his grace sufficient for you? Huh? So I ask the question, can this dry bone live? You see, I, I, I know what it is to be in a desolate valley. I know what it is to be broken, flawed, judged, alienated, discriminated against, and given up on. But the grace of God that lives within me raised me up. You see, God did something with this dry bone. You see, our lesson was supposed to come from chapter 37 this morning. The hand of God is upon me. This is Ezekiel 37. And he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of dry bones. You know, I am in the midst of dry bones this morning because I'm in the midst of people who are wounded. I'm in the midst of people who have been rejected, the midst of people who have been alienated. I'm in the midst of people who have been just ostracized. You've been judged. I am in the midst of people who are dry bones. See, I am in that place that the Spirit of the Holy Ghost wants me to be to let you know that God has not forgotten you. I am 
here this morning to tell you that even though you are a dry bone, God has sent me into what is called the midst of dry bones to let you know that he still lives and if he lives, he can live within you. God has sent me this morning so that someone who feels a little despair and a little displaced let you know that your place is always in Christ. You see, it's one thing about God. God never asked me for a resume to be a part of his kingdom. See, I didn't have to go through an, I didn't have to go through an interview. All I had to do was believe. All I had to do was call upon him and he answered me. I didn't have to go through the internet. I didn't have to hook up to Wi-Fi. You see, I didn't have to have an internet connection to reach God. As a dry bone, glory hallelujah this morning, God had his angels standing watch to where when I called, hey, and my brother Jesus, oh, he took my message to the messenger. And as a dry bone this morning, I stand before you in the midst of other dry bones to let you know this morning that God has sent the breath of life. And each of us in here have an obligation to breathe life into somebody else. Because as long as there's breath in your body, there's power in your tongue. You have the power to speak life over yourself. You shall live and not die. Just know what God says. As a dry bone, these bones will live. You see, as a person living with HIV, I know what it is to be a dry bone. I know what it is to be diagnosed as a person living with AIDS in the time when people have been judging everybody and all you get was, all I got was a death sentence. But I'm here to tell you that God gave me a reprieve and I am still here. Even though I am still a dry bone, there is no, the skin is no longer falling from my body. My tendons are not connected. I'm in the right place for all the right reasons. Doing all the right things. And it's all right to be a dry bone. It's all right to have been in the valley. It's all right. Hallelujah, thank you, Holy Spirit, to have been down. But it is no one who can lift you up like Jesus. And it's all right to be a dry bone. But you know the best thing about being a dry bone is knowing what you are. And see, a lot of times we don't own up to who we are. We shame. We live lives. We try to fit in to be in. Well, I'm here to tell you that the only club I'm a part of is the club of Jesus Christ, and I'm good with that. <laughs> Rejection can be a blessing, you all. It will push you to the never, next level. A push out ain't a bad thing. Sometimes being pushed out is being, having God push you up. I'm standing up here with no shoes on. That ain't me. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me this morning and said, you gotta get out of your comfort zone. Now I'm comfortable in my heels. They like that. But God said, get out of your comfort zone. And when he said, get out of my shoes, if the mic hadn't been on, I'd have said, huh? But <laughs> I didn't wanna feel, I didn't wanna be disobedient, so I took off my shoes. But you see, that's the problem we have. We are so comfortable where we are that we're afraid to be uncomfortable. Amen. Well, I come this morning to tell you it's time for all of us to get uncomfortable. Amen. It's time for us to take off some stuff. Amen. For me, it was my shoes. <laughs> now I'm gonna say to you, I don't know what it is you need to take off, but if it's heavy burdens, take them off this morning. Amen. If it's doubt in your life, take it off this morning. If it's confusion in your home, shake it off this morning. Whatever is in your house that's causing you to be a dry bone, get rid of it. Yeah. 
See, a dry bone. You know, some of, I, I, I'm a pork chop person. <laughs> when you get all the meat off that bone, ain't nothing left but the seasoning. You know, I'm country, so you know we fry, we, 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 we batter that, and we fry it up real good. And don't make some long gravy to it, you got a problem. Because once the meat is gone, all you have is that bone. And, and you know how we go out to eat and we bring that bone home. Because you don't want nobody to see what else you're going to do to that bone when you get it home. Because you ain't through with it yet. So I say that to say this. God ain't through with you yet. So God is adding a little long gravy to you. So you can weather the storms of life. And I know this may not be the traditional kind of preaching you're used to. Well, I'm sorry, that's all I got. <laughs> No, I'm serious. That's all I got. Thank you.
you wrote the Dr. Joyce, that was powerful. That was wonderful. And it was what we needed this morning. So thank you.
God, we thank you that you give us more than enough. We thank you that our cups overflow. We thank you that we can pour resources into your work, into your mission, in our time, in our talent, and our money. God, we thank you for all of your blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. As we pray in community, as we pray in community, as we prepare to come to this table, thank you, Dr. Joyce. Thank you so much. God, <clears throat> sometimes we feel like the whole world is a valley of dry bones and that we're just sunk down in the middle of it. And if we're lucky, maybe we can climb out a little bit and see just a tiny little bit of your sunshine, but we just stay in the dry bones. But God, you have given us the power to prophesy. You have given us the power to breathe new life into the dry bones all around us. Breathe new life into the dry bones of our community, our city, where we see the, the dry bones laying in blankets all up and down the streets. Getting wet out in the rain, we see the dry bones. God, as we look around our world, we look at our country, we see dry bones in our government. We see dry bones in the people that are supposed to lead us. We see dry bones as, as we march around the world and we, we try and dress up the dry bones like we're really doing something right and we know we ain't. God, we just ask you to open our eyes and open our hearts renew our minds that we might catch the wave and understand that the bones don't have to stay dry because we are empowered to breathe that life that you have breathed into us God just make us aware of the power that you have given us. Make us aware of our, our duty to be the representatives of Christ in this world. Give us the confidence. Take away our doubt. Take away our fear. Bring us to that new day that your sons and your daughters may prophesy and your young men and your young women will dream dreams. And that those dreams might become the flesh and the sinews and the skin on those dry bones. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. and amen. Back in the 1980s, doesn't seem that long ago to me, might seem that long ago to you. There were a number of churches in our denomination whose mission it was to speak to women, whose mission it was to speak in the language of the women's movement and bring that language into our faith. Because believe me, at that time, women thought the church was nothing but dry bones and didn't want anything to do with it. So we began to translate our faith into language those women could understand. The song that my dear sisters are going to share with me this morning as we consecrate communion, you've heard before. But from this altar, you have not heard the original, original words as we wrote them then and as we sang them then. Today, in honor of women, in honor of national women and girls with AIDS and HIV, in honor of International Women's Day, we go back home to those original words. The bread that 
Jesus breaks with me. as you change us. That here it has become the body, here it has become the blood, here we have become the Christ. God, as we take on the challenge of coming to this table, we just ask that you would walk with us down the aisle, that you would come forward with us in our hearts, and that you would nourish us as always. In the name of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. For anybody that doesn't know at MCC, we do practice an open communion. That means it's not our table. It's not some doctrine or some dogma's table. It's God's table and it's our table and it's your table. No matter what you've been told before, you can come here to this table. All we ask is that you follow the directions of the ushers. They'll lead you in how you should go. If you want to just have communion alone by yourself with God, we'll have a station over next to the ASL interpreter where you can go for that. Otherwise, you come in, we will give you a blessing, and we will share with you what God has shared with us. Amen.
I don't think I need to ask you, but have you been in church yet? <laughs> so thankful that when we come to this place, the spirit shows up yeah. and shows out and shows off. Mm. And it's all good. We'll take every bit of it, won't we? Yeah. Would you rise as you're able and join us in our closing song?
Anyway, we're delighted that you were in worship with us today. And we hope that you will do exactly what we've been hearing about during this service. That we go out and make a difference in our world. That we don't sit silently by and become more and more dried up. But we take it. We take that word when the prophecy comes. We take that word of encouragement, that word of hope. We take that moment to go out and share the breath and the spirit of God. And with that, we say amen. amen. I do want to let you know that the movie, that uh, the documentary that Dr. Joyce is in is going to be playing downstairs and our hospitality time will be downstairs today because the movie is down there. So we invite you to come down. If you don't get a chance to speak to her up here, you can come down and see her downstairs. It's about an hour long, so yes, you might want to, you know, if you're really starving, well, you know, stay hungry with us. And then afterwards, <laughs> we're probably going around the corner. Is it Palermo's, the Italian restaurant around the yeah. corner? Yes. We're going around there for lunch in a few minutes, so come and join us and spend some time with Dr. Joyce and enjoy her company. She's a hoot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you are dismissed. Shake hands and be friends.